Hello everyone and welcome to the other uh, game that we are going to cover from the uh, Superbet Chess Classic Round 5. It is uh, former World Chess Championship challenger Yanni Pomnishi versus Maxim Vachel Lagrave. Uh, both of them uh, already lost the game in the tournament and they would very much love to come back. Uh, so let's see what happened in this one. Uh, Nepo has the white pieces and he started with pawn to e4. And something that we should definitely uh, mention before checking out the game is uh, uh, Nepo has a great score against pretty much everyone in classical chess except Maxim because against Maxim, uh, Nepo has only one one win he has six losses and they have 10 more draws so that's a pretty terrible score to have against someone uh, in classical and Nepo would definitely enjoy uh, beating Maxim here with the white pieces so here Maxim goes for c5 as he usually does the Sicilian defense and Nepo tries pawn to c3 the Alapin variation we have pawn to d5 captures captures and pawn to d4 this is the uh, the, the main line the Bremen uh, the defense by black we have knight to f6 knight to f3 and now pawn to e6 we have knight to a3 bringing the knight to c4 pawn to a6 knight to c4 and now knight b to d7 we have pawn to a4 and b6 so this has all been played before nothing new here uh, bishop to e2 we have bishop to b7 nicely positioning the bishop and queen on this diagonal castles and c captures on d4 now of course now the knight cannot capture you would just get um, uh, checkmated on g2 but you can capture with the queen offering a queen trade we have bishop to c5 of course nepo would would, um, enjoy the trade happening on d5 but here we have queen to h4 uh, uh, Nepo goes for uh, this uh, very new tricky move uh, because the moves that uh, have been played before are queen to f4 and queen captures on d5 but after queen to h4 it's a new move so now as of move 12 we have a completely new game uh, how does Maxim deal with this he plays queen to e4 offers the queen trade once again and now Nepo accepts uh, but on e4 so captures captures he trades on his terms uh, knight f to d2 offering a trade of knights and knight e back to f6 we have knight to b3 now pressuring the bishop and bishop back to um, uh, e7 we have bishop to f4 now really fighting for that d6 square if you can put the rook on d1 should be should be excellent uh, and just bishop to d5 now for, uh, pressuring both of the knights here we have rook f to d1 and now uh, just castles by mvl we have knight b to d2 you don't want that uh, knight looking silly on b3 and rook f to c8 uh, putting more pressure on that c4 knight uh, we have knight to e3 attacking the bishop and just bishop going back to c6 we have knight d back to c4 and pawn to a5 now uh, we have knight to d6 finally winning that d6 square and you don't want this monster knight here so you just have to give up the bishop pair for it so bishop captures we have bishop captures on d6 you could also consider uh, rook captures on g6 but bishop captures on g6 uh, d6 seems to be uh, offering you uh, a bit more uh, b because now it's very hard to kick it away from there but of course as usual there always is a way knight to c5 the knight is now coming to b7 and will put pressure on the bishop um, uh, from there on d6 and this is what Maxim went uh, in the uh, meant uh, in the quote above the board uh, we have bishop to b5 now knight to b7 attacking the bishop and the bishop back to a3 we have rook to c7 uh, and now pawn to f3 we have rook a to c8 doubling up on the c file rook to d2 preparing to double up on the d file pawn to h6 and rook a to d1 here we have a trade bishop captures pawn captures and here mvl just plays king to h7 and he says that okay the knight here is a bit weird but uh he's doing a fine job he's uh, his two knights are definitely controlled a lot of squares here this is defended by this knight this is defended by this knight so the rooks can't really uh, do anything along the d file also the the d cover is sufficiently protected so you can't really lift anything here so here king to f2 nepo starts bringing his king into the game and pawn to g5 by mvl we have pawn to h4 and just king to g6 with h captures on g5 h captures and now pawn to g4 uh nepo also maybe uh with some ideas of using the h files uh, file to his advantage but uh, mvl grabs hold of it first we have rook h rook to h8 king to g3 and now rook c to c8 now he's preparing to double up on the h file we have pawn to c4 and now rook to h7 so uh still not a lot of use for the rooks on the on the d file uh we have bishop to d6 and now we have knight to d7 
uh, we have pawn to b3 and pawn to f6 now. Uh, we have bishop back to a3 now. Nepo is shifting the bishop over to this diagonal, but now knight to e5. And this knight is putting a lot of pressure uh, on white's position here, as you'll see very soon. We have bishop to b2, but now rook uh, c to h8. And all of a sudden, there are some uh, dangers here along the h file. We have king to f2. The problem is uh, none of the choices you have are uh, particularly good. You could eliminate the knight from e5, but you know that giving up this bishop is pretty bad long term because after, let's say, knight to f1, e4 is coming, and uh, this is uh, not easy to hold. If, you, if, For example, if you capture, then rook to h3 check comes, then you can pick up the b3 pawn. Uh, not, uh, not great. Uh, so uh, another thing you could do is play knight to f1 right away. It will keep an eye on the h2 square, so you don't have to worry about check and check. But still, the f3 pawn is attacked, and uh, you, you could just lose it. For example, rook to h3 with check, king g2 knight captures an f2, attacks the rook, and you have to play some sort of a passive move like rook to e2. And while the engine says, okay, maybe white can hold this, uh, you kind of don't believe that. No, no one believes that. Uh, so king to f2 was played, and now knight to c5 by Maxime, putting pressure on that b3 pawn, and here uh, Nepo, uh, he, he was playing very quickly because Maxime was low on time and he really wanted to pressure him. He played bishop captures on e5, which is um, uh, the, the, the best move according to the engine, but this position uh, in itself isn't all that great. We have f captures on e5, now rook to d6. He tries to go for some sort of a, an active plan now. Okay, knight captures on b3 will be met with rook captures on e6, but Maxime plays rook to h2 with check and now king to g1. If you block with the knight, then you just run into e5. For. This is terrible for white. Uh, you, you can't really do anything here. If, if you capture here, then knight captures on e4 with check, and your position just, um, uh, you know, is completely ruined. And if you play something like rook to d8 to try and uh, trade off a pair of rooks, then rook uh, comes to h3, and again, nah, you, you're not coming, coming out of this alive. So king to g1 was played by Nepo. Now comes rook to h1 check, king to f2, and now rook 1 to h2 with check. King back to g1, and now pawn to e4. And what can you play here? Uh, again, not a lot. Uh, capturing this doesn't really do anything. You just allow the other rook to come to h3, and then white is pretty much without a move. So knight to f1 was played attacking the rook here, rook to b2 going after the pawn, and now rook captures on b6, saying that, okay, if you move the knight, I'm going to capture on e6, and I'm going to be fine. But Maxim plays e captures on f3. We have rook to d2 offering a rook trade, and now rook to b1. We have rook to c6, uh, now three threatening to pick up the knight and again hoping for knight captures on b3 to be able to play rook captures on e6 but uh, Maxime finds a way and there is only one way to win this game and it's it's uh, it's a very long forcing line but if you cal calculate it right you too can be the winner of this game so feel free to pause the video and win the game for Maxime uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding this beautiful move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy, it is rook captures on f1. That's the move that finishes the job. Rook captures, the only move you have is king captures and now rook to h1 with check. As these two squares are covered, your only move is king to f2. And now you run into this fork. Knight to e4 with check. Uh, we have king captures on f3 and now knight captures on d2 with check, forking the king and the pawn on b3. So king e3, knight captures on b3, now MVL is up a full piece, but uh, Nepo still has the two connected pass pawns, uh, and uh, it's not all clear if he can stop them. So pawn to b6, but now rook to h3 with check. Again, MVL has to be engine precise here in order to win this. King f2, now rook to h8. Now the uh, back rank is being covered by the rook, and the problem is if you play b7, just rook to b8, and you're covered. So here, Nepo tries rook captures on e6 with check. King to f7 attacks the rook, and now rook e5. If he can maybe eliminate all of the pawns, then still it's going to be great for him. However, pawn to a4. Uh, and now what do you play here? Rook to b5, putting the rook behind the passed pawn. Also, a3 is impossible because of rook captures. Uh, king to e6. Not a problem. We have king to e3. And here we have 
on the a3 and he was in this position on move uh, uh, 58 that Yanni Pomnashi resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. The problem is now if you capture the knight with rook captures on b3, pawn to a2 and how are you stopping the pawn? You can't go to b1 and of course if you put the rook to a3 then rook to h3 check comes which was the whole point of forcing the king to come to e3 so uh, obviously that loses on the spot and uh, on the other hand if you play something like pawn to b7 to try and promote here you you can promote but you are much too uh too too slow pawn to a2 b8 queen rook captures uh rook captures and now a1 queen you do get to pick up the knight but now it's a queen against rook of course this is completely winning uh you can win this uh, many different ways like you can play some like queen here with check or you can just play queen to g1 with check pick up the g4 pawn then let's say trade the queen for the rook push the g pawn to victory there are so many ways to winning this and of course um uh, nepo knows this so after pawn to a3 nepo resigned and that's pretty much it uh for those of you who are interested in the standings after five rounds of the super bet chess classic as tomorrow is a rest day so we're going to cover games from uh, other tournaments as well as there are quite a lot of them being played and i have seen your suggestions so don't worry you have been heard uh these are the standings after round five so fabi leading the tournament with three and a half points we have a, a three-way tie uh for for second third and fourth alireza firuja wesley so and richard rapport then with two and a half points we have anish giri and maxim vachel agra with two points uh jan nepomneshi dingler and young shishtov dude you can see that the world champion and the former world chess championship challenger uh are not not uh uh, uh, very close to um, at the, the top of the leaderboard but uh, you know okay it's still early maybe something uh, shifts and the local hero Bogdan Daniel Dak currently in last place with one and a half points so there we have it uh, a lot of fun here not a lot of fun for the former world chess championship challenger and the current world champion Dinge Nepo uh, but you know the tournament's still young uh, it might um, uh, you know, you know uh, pick up for them and go, go their way but we'll see what happens uh, so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys uh, enjoyed it uh, and uh, you know if you ever feel like MVL did that your position was as MVL felt you know don't despair you know good things might happen uh, so yeah uh, I would like to thank Edmund Freeman Evan uh, Bercy Ravishing Reptiles YouTube Lord of Bones and Mazin Elserak for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it as usual you can check to all my previous videos here thank Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of everything else that's happening in the chess world and after the rest of the day finishes of course coming back to this wonderful classical event. Uh, thank you all I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.